if someone tells you they don't have any regrets, they are either lying, have a neurological condition, or more likely, they're living under the fantasy that you can and should avoid regrets. Because despite all the feel-good messaging you see on Instagram every day about how important it is to live your life without any regrets, I actually think the exact opposite is true. Hi, my name is Nick Wignall. I'm a clinical psychologist and the founder of The Friendly Mind, a free weekly newsletter where I share practical evidence-based advice for emotional health and well-being. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why, instead of avoiding regrets, I believe we should actually embrace them. We all have regrets because we all make mistakes. It's unavoidable. And when you occasionally remember or think about a mistake you've made in the past, it's totally normal to feel a little bit of regret. Of course, some people are completely consumed by regret, usually because of unhelpful mental patterns, things like self-criticism or rumination, things like that. But that's a very different thing than simply feeling and moving through the occasional bout of regret. After all, regret is just an emotion. And like any emotion, from fear and anger to sadness and anxiety, it's a perfectly normal part of the human experience. But more than just being okay or normal, I can think of three very specific reasons why regret is actually good and helpful if you learn to look at it the right way. Number one, regret is a byproduct of ambition. Now, I don't mean ambition in the extremely narrow, work super hard and hustle to get rich quick sense of the word, or the uh, take over the world <laughs> sense of the word. I mean ambitious in the completely psychologically healthy sense of the term, which is that you have a sense of your dreams, your values, your aspirations, your goals, the things you want to accomplish in your life, and you strive to make those happen. Unfortunately, a lot of people grow up believing that the worst thing in the world is to fail, and maybe even a little bit worse than that is to be seen as a failure by other people. As a result, they learn from a very young age often not to be ambitious. Right? Because if you don't think about or dream about or cultivate these ambitions or goals you set for yourself, you don't have to worry about failing or maybe even worse, God forbid, other people thinking that you're a failure. Of course, this starts off in relatively small ways, usually um, in your young adulthood or childhood. You know, It's something like you decide not to try out for the cheerleading team despite really wanting to be a cheerleader or you are in college and you switch out of your risky creative major uh, and do something more practical, or it's not asking out that guy you're really interested in because you feel inadequate. Now, no one of these things seems particularly catastrophic in the moment, but then one day you wake up at 45 years old feeling empty, lost, and just kind of depressed because you never took a risk. And frankly, you wouldn't even know what to take a risk on because since the time you were 12 years old, you've avoided and suppressed every ambitious instinct you've ever had. The paradox of regret is that the more you try to minimize regret, the more likely it is that your whole life becomes one. Or put a slightly different way, it turns out not taking risks is actually the riskiest way to go through life. On the other hand, when you're willing to lean into and face and accept difficult emotions like fear or regret, you can start building a more ambitious, fulfilling life, whatever that looks like for you. Because it's only by embracing regret, by being willing to feel it and have it, that you can be assertive enough to live a life that's creative, exciting, and meaningful. Number two, regret is a sign of emotional maturity. Maturity in any area of life is about being willing to open yourself up to feedback and growth by doing something new. For instance, you only mature intellectually when you're willing to acknowledge what you don't know and then work to fill the gaps by learning and studying. You only mature socially when you're willing to put aside being selfish and learn to balance your own needs with those of other people. And you only mature emotionally when you become aware of your emotions, especially the difficult, uncomfortable ones, and take responsibility for managing them instead of kind of blaming them on other people or the world. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't mature emotionally as much as you would expect because fundamentally, they're unwilling to experience and feel and sit with difficult emotions like regret. The cycle kind of goes something like this. Regret feels bad, right? It's totally natural. It doesn't feel good to feel any kind of uncomfortable emotion, especially regret. And because it feels bad, people assume that it is bad. Something's wrong if I'm feeling regret. So anytime regret then starts to emerge, they immediately avoid it or suppress it or try to get rid of it. Now what happens is when your brain sees you doing this enough, running away from or trying to get rid of regret, 
it ends up thinking that regret is dangerous, which means you're going to start feeling anxious and ashamed anytime you feel regret. Now your overall level of emotionality has ballooned, has gotten much bigger. So regret feels a lot worse and your impulse to avoid or get rid of regret gets even stronger. It's a pretty awful vicious cycle to fall into. The trouble is, if you're in denial about regret, you can't learn anything from it. And many of the most transformative experiences in life come from a direct results of reflecting on the mistakes we've made, which requires being willing to tolerate difficult emotions like regret. A couple quick examples to illustrate this. Let's say you passed up a new job opportunity because while it was exciting, it was also kind of scary and intimidating. So you said no and settled for your safe, but kind of boring and uninspired job. Looking back, you realize this was not a great decision for you given your circumstances, but it's only by being willing to feel the regret that comes with that decision that you're able to really reflect on it and learn from it so that you can avoid making a similar mistake in the future. Or let's say when you were younger, you cheated on a romantic partner of yours. Only by being willing to acknowledge and tolerate the regret you understandably feel when you think about that incident, that you will really be able to analyze and reflect on it and understand why you did it in the first place so that hopefully you can avoid future behavior like that. Regret, like many emotional experiences, often has something to teach us, but you'll never learn from it if you're not willing to sit with it and have it. That doesn't mean you have to wallow in or stew on or ruminate on your regret, but people who have a healthy relationship with their emotions, including regret, are much more likely to demonstrate emotional growth and maturity across every area of life. Number three, regret fosters empathy. If you're familiar with regret, because you've learned to tolerate and accept it and spent some time with it, you're going to be much more likely to be empathetic and compassionate and understanding with other people, especially with their struggles. A few examples, a parent who has really spent some time considering and reflecting on and being willing to have the regret that comes up when they think back on their past as a kid, as a teenager, maybe they're going to have a much easier time connecting with and being there for their teenage kids who are going through something difficult. And by the way, they're going to come across as much more authentic and attuned as a result of that. Or here's a kind of a funny example, but I think a really uh, resonant one, take a salesperson. So you do sales for some company. I would bet if you take some time to really reflect on some of your regrets with money in your past, maybe even in your present, that is going to make you much more attuned to and empathetic to your potential customers who have some of those same fears about shelling out a bunch of money for whatever your product is. But because you've really reflected on that regret and can empathize better, you might be ultimately both more compassionate and more effective in helping those potential customers overcome some of those fears or concerns. Now, on the other hand, People who chronically avoid or suppress or are just frankly in denial about their regret, they often come across as kind of cold or uncaring or distant to other people. Because even though they know intellectually about other people's struggles, they can't connect with it emotionally. And other people pick up on that. They feel that. Now, it's worth stating the obvious here that <laughs> the willingness to experience regret doesn't automatically triple your EQ yet or make you, you know, amazingly relatable and empathetic and charismatic or something like that. Obviously not, but it is a very good place to start. So if you do get feedback either directly or maybe indirectly and kind of subtly that you're not especially warm or supportive or have a hard time connecting with people or that people have a hard time connecting with you, leaning into regret embracing it, accepting it, being willing to have it can actually be a powerful way forward. And here's what I would recommend. If you want to start leaning into and practicing having regret instead of avoiding it all the time for any of the reasons we talked about above, it's very simple. Once a week, schedule 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe, and sit down with a pen and paper and then think back on your life to something you regret. Not something tiny, something medium to big size, a medium to big size regret. Then spend a few minutes and reflect on in writing each of these questions. Number one, how did I feel in the moment? What about the days afterwards? So just get in touch with how you felt. Try and really think back viscerally to how you felt when you made the decision that led to the regret. 
what emotions and motivations led me to make the decision that again led to the regret. Without denying any responsibility for my actions, in what ways was it understandable that I ended up making that decision? How do I wish I had handled the situation instead? And finally, how can my feelings of regret over this situation help me in the future? Do this little practice for a few weeks and I guarantee you will be significantly more attuned to your own regrets and as a result, much more empathetic with other people and their struggles. Because ultimately, just like the mistakes that precede it, regret is an essential part of who we are. And embracing that will not only help you to feel more authentic and kind of at home with yourself, but it will also help you connect in a really meaningful and helpful way with other people. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I mentioned above, if you'd like to learn more from me, I write a free weekly newsletter called The Friendly Mind that's full of lots of practical advice and ideas and essays and videos about emotional health and well being and how to grow more emotionally strong and resilient. So you can check that out. I also teach a four week masterclass called Mood Mastery, where I teach a small handful of motivated students the essential skills and practices for building emotional resilience. You can learn more about either the newsletter or the masterclass using the links in the description below. Cheers.